Hey, we're in Chicago checking out this. This is the brand new Moto Z3. And that's right, it's the Z3, not the Z3 Play, not the Z3 Force. But I understand the confusion because as a device, this looks almost exactly like the Z3 Play we tested earlier this year. For one, it has this big, bright six inch Super AMOLED display running at 1080p plus. Uh, it could be a little bit brighter. We're on a bright rooftop here in Chicago and it's not the easiest thing to see, but it gets the job done. The biggest difference between this and the Z3 Play, because again, this design is almost identical is what's happening inside. It runs a Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 chipset. You might remember that as being the flagship chipset from last year. Motorola made this decision mostly to keep the price point down. They wanted to give people something close to flagship performance for under $500, or in this case, $480 through Verizon because it is an exclusive. Now, there's a lot to like about the phone's design, but nothing that we haven't already said about the Z3 Play. The big difference is this, actually. This is the 5G Moto mod. It's not gonna be available until early 2019, and even if you got one before, it wouldn't really help because there are no easily accessible 5G networks anyway. That said, there's a lot of really interesting stuff going on here. There's a set of four very tiny 5G antennas baked inside, plus two modems, Qualcomm's X50 modem, that'll give you access to the 5G network if it's available, and an X24 modem, that's gonna come into play for most of your LTE needs. And what's really interesting is, while you can attach this to older Moto devices like the original Moto Z and Z2, for instance, you won't necessarily get full 5G speeds you will see some kind of improvement because this has the X24 modem inside. And when the mod is attached to a phone, the modem inside the mod supersedes the modem inside the phone. So you're gonna get better performance right off the bat because you've got newer hardware that isn't actually inside your phone at all, which is pretty cool. When you do have access to that 5G network, however, you can expect some pretty significant increases in speed based on some tests that we saw here inside Motorola's headquarters. If you're sitting in the bottom 10%, if 90% of people on Verizon's 5G network have performance that's better than yours, you're still looking at about 180 to 200 megabits per second down. That means you can download a file that's about three gigs in close to two, two and a half minutes. That's pretty impressive, but because we're in an area without 5G, and with a mod that doesn't actually work yet, we're gonna have to take these claims with a grain of salt and do our own testing when those networks go live in late 2018 and early 2019. That said, there are some really fascinating things going on in here. And while I don't necessarily know that Motorola plans to keep its mod platform going past this device, I think it served its purpose. And I think the ability to bring new functionality like 5G service to devices like this and older ones with varying degrees of performance is actually pretty cool. So I thank them for that. I don't know that I'd buy one of these things, but for $480, you get a phone with pretty solid performance and some very interesting flexibility.